Good afternoon and welcome once again to In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella and Tony Go. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're a little bit late today, actually. We've had a few problems with the internet, unfortunately, but we did get there we in were, the end. We were there. So I'm um, really sorry to our wonderful guest that's been waiting very patiently for us to get ready. So we're really excited and blessed to be interviewing today singer songwriter Clive John who is also the Johnny Cash Roadshow, and he's amazing, and he's due to come down to Dorset on the 11th of September. Can we just so, say the award-winning and endorsed to your uh, yes, show? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's he is a multi-award winning. So good afternoon, Clive. How are you? Hello, Deborah. Nice to see you again. Nice Indeed. to see you too. How are things with you? How have you been coping with the um, pandemic? Well, I can't complain. I've enjoyed the... I've enjoyed all of the free time because uh, before the lockdown, I was on the road all of the time. You know, I'd be in, yeah. you know, all over Europe. Hi, Tony, by the way. You know. I was sorry, Clive. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, uh, I, and I used to really enjoy my free time. So for the first six months, I was like, oh, this is lovely. But after six months, I was like, OK, let's get uh, back to work now, you know. But, uh, it's been 17 or 18 months now and it's just mm -hmm. you know we need to get back to work you know that's it i mean financially my family needs me to get back to work so so we're lining up all of the gigs i've already lost about 180 shows since the beginning wow. of that many lockdown we were on tour in belgium last uh, uh february 2020 and we were supposed to be doing 15 and 16 shows uh back to back and we did the first one sold well we sold like 500 seats went down really well and everybody then was like starting to worry about this thing called covid and i went oh it'll be okay because i've always been okay over the years no matter what the political situation is or who's in the government i've always been able to gig you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah so I thought, oh, it'll be OK. It's just another political thing and scaremongering. But sure enough, the following day, we were setting up for um, our next show. And and the manager came in and said, uh, uh, that'll be the end. Pack it all away. You're not allowed to perform if there's any more than 300 uh, people in. So that was that. Um, we did the first show. And then we came back to England. You know, so... So that was it, and I haven't done a show since. Right. It's been, a, I think a lot of people have found it very difficult during the pandemic, and it's really sad that so many people have actually lost their lives, Clive, as well. But on the plus side, having that <laughs> additional time to be at home with our families, oh, well, and really that. that's yeah. been very precious, I think, to each and every one of us. And it's been sad because some people have actually lost a lot, you know, their actual lives due to COVID or lost their homes, their jobs, end up homeless as well. And I think it's had a huge impact on the entire world to be honest you know so it's always Definitely. good to count our blessings that we've still yeah. got like a roof over our head and our families that are still here but mm. i think a lot of people have been also proactive during that time during the pandemic by focusing on all of the things that they wanted to do that maybe they didn't necessarily have the time so did you do any songwriting during that time clive i've recorded an album of songs i've i've written loads of songs uh the first one that I wrote was a song called Every uh, uh, Cloud, and it got loads of attention um, for some reason. Um, and it was my my words on uh, the COVID situation. So I, I wrote the song. I've learned how to use iMovie too, which is something that I could never do before. So I did like a simple video for it. And... Um, and it did really well. It, it, it was one of the, it, it was in the top 100 most uh, downloaded songs in uh, in uh, the iTunes uh, charts. Which, uh, which That's fantastic. I, was I know. Not that I made any Brilliant. money off it. <laughs> 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 so oh, that's that's the problem. 
it's expensive to record a song that people can download for nothing. You know what I mean? I've yes. I've never made sense out of it. You know, but uh, but I did it, and I was amazed with all the attention that it uh, uh, got. But that's uh, done now, and it's like forgotten about. Then I recorded an an, an album of my version of a lot of uh, the Johnny Cash songs towards the end of his uh, life. I've recorded that album and that's called the highway home album and that's got uh, the covid song on it also so i've done that i began writing a book but i've lost interest really? in that really well, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> did sure you get how... bored <laughs> yeah i'm not sure it's, in it's, the computer also... Type in. <laughs> it's also dangerous because i w i'd like to be completely honest about people in my life and people that i've met and musicians yeah. and band members that i've fallen out with <laughs> And there's a lot of people still still alive. So I don't want to get into any possible suing situations. You know what I mean? So I've decided to yeah. leave it alone. Yes. So I'm just going to do like a pictorial book, booklet, brochure thing. So like a brochure for a show, but like a, a much nicer version. Just with yeah. like, photo yeah, just with photographs and saying this was me when I did this and this was this and that was that and you know what i mean so i'm gonna do that so lots of things i've got new band members lots of rehearsals uh oh my brain's gone blank lots of other things <laughs> lots lots of other other things i've programmed in a show next year where i'm going to be doing a theater show of just my own material which is the first time ever because i've always oh, done exciting. the different yeah yeah so lots of things uh going on um but I can't do anything uh, show-wise until um, until the restrictions are all gone, you know? So Yeah. I was just think, thinking, Clive, you, you're talking about Johnny Cash's album. Um, I, I do a country show, and I've got a memory stick with all my tracks on, and I come across some unknown albums from Johnny Cash, and one of the tracks on there that really got me, I wonder if you heard you, you may have heard it, obviously you've heard of it, uh, beans for breakfast. He, yeah, he had a comedy side to him as well. He had a comedy side to him as well, didn't he? With his singing. I prefer the comedy side to Johnny Cash. We, yeah. my show, the Johnny Cash Roadshow. I try and focus on the uh, uh, the upbeat, uh, more yeah. more feel good factor of it. So the show's got yeah. a more rock and roll feel to it, rather yeah. than because there's a lot of Johnny Cash songs that are quite down and quite reflective. So I don't do too many of those you know mm. but uh beans for breakfast yeah i know that one uh that's one from the 70s isn't it can we just take a listen to this track here yeah let's just take a listen to let's just take a listen to clive in in, in business here when i hear the whistle blowing I hang my head and cry. <laughs> See, Clive, they're chuckling to yourself. We, yeah, we see that you dress the part as well. What was that? You dress the part as well. You take on his persona completely. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've actually had a new uh, black suit uh, made up since yeah. uh, the lockdown. So, uh, yeah. look, looking forward uh, to wearing it. You got a new brand suit, yeah. Yeah. See the band like, members as well, the band members as well. They they take on the persona of Johnny Cash's backing band as well, don't they? The the suits and the all the same immaculate. I buy uh, the same uh, jackets for the band. So that year there was 2018 and I uh -huh. bought uh, white jackets for all of the band. And this time when we go back, I bought uh, grey jackets. But the problem okay. is, I've got three new band members, and everybody's a different size. So <laughs> I don't know whether whether they're going to actually uh, be okay on them or not. <laughs> but yeah. 
So I'd like to sort of go back where it all actually started, Clive, with you, because, you know, I did read online that you did actually have an operation and the surgeon did actually say to you, it'd be good to actually, you, you know, learn a stringed instrument to keep your fingers supple. Uh, and that's when obviously you started playing the guitar. So how old was you when that, you know, actually happened? Because it didn't actually state when I was like reading up some information about you. I burned my hands. I'll show you, look. Uh, can you see that? I don't. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, bless there. you. You see the scar in there, yeah? Yeah. 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 How did you burn it, Clive? Mm? How both, did you burn your hands? Both hands. Ooh. I put them on an electric fire. Bear in mind, when I was a kid, it, it was in the mid to late 70s. And uh, uh, do you remember those? Not that, not that you're old enough. Uh, <laughs> of course. But, uh, um do you remember those electric fires uh, that had uh, uh, the red hot elements in? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes. yeah. With like yeah. Uh, the cage, yeah, in front of it. Well, I put my—I was only about two and a half—and I put my hands through the cage and I grabbed hold of one of uh, the red hot elements. Oh, painful! Ouch! And I—I I nearly died. I nearly died. Really? Oh, I, I, I was in and out of hospital till I was about five. And I had uh, oh, both, my arms, both of my arms uh, plastered all the way up to the elbow, so I couldn't. Oh, painful! Uh, 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 use my hands, you know. So I just. Oh, yeah. oh it's really sad. Uh, Your mum must have been her beside hand. herself when that happened, Clive. Yeah. What was that? Your mum must have been beside herself when that happened, and you yeah. grabbing. I mean, being a mum myself, it, you know, it, when the kids were yeah. little and they hurt themselves, you know, we get distraught don't we so to actually do that and then have to go through all of that as yeah. well bless you Please i don't think up. they've ever uh forgiven themselves really but uh, oh, you know, my dad bless. was in the room oh was he uh, yeah when i actually did it it's just that he didn't see me uh, going over towards it oh. you know, the thing but is, anyway. when you're a child, you're quite inquisitive, aren't you, as a child? I mean, my yes. son used to put crayons down the back of the actual gas fire and they'd melt and he'd put them actually in the video player as well, <laughs> as well That's as drawing on the wall. So, yeah. again, I think sometimes with young lads, they're even more sort of inquisitive, aren't they, sometimes yeah, be, yeah. as well, yeah. you know, and you were literally just a, a little babe at the time, two, you know, yeah. two and a half years old. Yeah. So thank God that, you, you know, you was okay and yeah, got into the instruments. It. Yes, I just feel, I kind of, well, I wouldn't say that I like them, but it's just uh, part of me now. And yes. I can't imagine my life uh, without them now because I've no. always, uh, they've uh, been there always. So uh, I got them off my hands, all the bandages and the plasters, everything when I was about six, no, when I was about five. And, uh, and the surgeon said, I should learn to play the piano to keep my fingers supple, uh -huh. to keep moving. So, and I was always singing anyway, even when I was in the hospital, I was at the side of the cot. Aww. So they said, just singing and keeping everybody awake. <laughs> That's lovely. Did, and, did your uh, mum and dad sing as well, Clive? Do you come from a family of performers and entertainers? No, my mum's Irish and she came across from Ireland to England when she was only about 17. She was a nurse, married a policeman, so all of that sort of thing. So I'm the only one. How are yeah. you? Can we um, yeah. backtrack a few years now? Um, a little older than you were when you had your accident. How did you come across being a um, Johnny Cash type um, singer? That was down to Chris Allen, your friend, wasn't it, Clive, that you actually met and he gave you um, a, a double album of Johnny Cash and you kept playing it over and over again. That's when it, your first love for Johnny Cash actually started, didn't it? You've done your homework on me, haven't you? My God. I certainly do, <laughs> most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, he was my best friend at the time. I was, uh, I was about, well, I met Chris when I was about, 26 and then we were best friends and um he gave me a double and at that time i was busy doing solo gigs I, I lived in america when i was 25 i went over there lived there for six months i thought i was going to be there for the rest of uh, my life but that's a different s story i'll have to we'll have to allow about an hour and a half 
on another. We've got an hour today, so you can touch on it if you like. Well, 45 we've minutes, Jane. We've got 45 minutes, so, you right. know, please feel free. <laughs> oh, my God, I thought we only had about five minutes. No, no, no. Um, this is actually an hour show, so, it, you know, basically, the show's yours. Go on to oh, right. touch whatever you want to touch on to. Yes. I didn't. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. I wasn't prepared for this at all. I thought. Oh, I sorry. I thought fight. Tony prepared you, <laughs> Mr. Gay. Oh, I do apologize. <laughs> well, I thought we, I was, so, uh, one go of the other guests. No no, 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 no. The show is yours. This you is your are show, the mate. only guest on my show today or our show today. Oh, thank you. That's I okay. All right, lovely. Sorry. Well, okay. I, I lived in yeah. um, America. I left all of, I, I left uh, Malvern, where I live, uh, when I was just 25. Uh, I sold all of my worldly possessions because I was signed to a record label in Ireland when I was with my very first album, uh, which was In a Whisper. That was what it was called. Nothing to do with uh, George. Uh, Michael, <laughs> no, <laughs> or horses, by the way. Um, yeah, careless whisper. That was his, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, in a whisper, uh, uh, got me the record deal, but the record deal proved to be uh, no use at all. And the guy that owned the label, I can't say his uh, name, but but he took me and a load of other singer songwriters over to uh, America. Uh, to uh, Connecticut uh, to live. It was like this big house, this massive property wow. uh, with no furniture in it though because he didn't pay for the furniture. So it was like, like this huge house but without any armchairs in it or no furniture. It, it was really weird. So so I had my own bedroom but with no uh, uh, bed in it or furniture. So I'd literally lay on the carpet every night for about three months, which was a nightmare. So anyway, I, he said, oh, you'd be getting the gigs, you'd be turned. He was Irish. He said, you'd be earning a thousand pound a gig and you'll be uh, turning the gigs away. But the reality was there wasn't any gigs ar arranged except for one at uh, a university. And then I was just doing uh, bar gigs, you know, because we lived in uh, Connecticut. I went to New York, which was two hours that way and then up to Boston, which was two hours uh, the other way. And um, and the reality was I was getting paid $100 uh, dollars, uh, for each for each of them, mm. maybe 150 some nights. So it was really hard work. And uh, I got to Boston for the first one, which was on St. Patrick's uh, Day. And, and over there, they celebrate St. Patrick's Day like you wouldn't believe. They got the pipers walking around in all the kilts and <laughs> and all of that. And the bar, I played at a bar called the Irish Embassy and it was packed and I was trying to like uh, uh, get in and it was like a, a blizzard. So the weather was really bad and I was on my own and loaded in all of this mixing desk and speakers I'm trying to get past all of these people you know what folks are like you know they don't move you know mm. and, and and it was just a nightmare so i managed to live like that for six months and and then i just had enough but my uncle lived in new york and i had a half an hour tv program in new york which went out to thousands of people of playing just my own material so that was good you know but um I wrote a lot of songs when I was over there, so and, and some of those songs are some of the favourites now. So I came back to England, yeah, and getting back to where I was, I met my friend uh, Chris, and he was with me on the road doing. He was just like um, uh, my best mate, really, and and he and he came with me to all of the gigs. Um, he was great, but it wasn't much use though because he'd just get pissed and then I'd have to oh, drive home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he's a bit of a party animal then, Clive, really, was he? <laughs> he was definitely a party animal, yeah. Yeah, but he was always there, you know. So, but uh, bless him, he got a brain tumor and died when he was only uh, 28. 
and, oh, and so uh, sad. And I was only thirty. But before he died, he gave me an album of Johnny Cash music, and I was already playing one or two of Johnny Cash songs within my set because I was doing mm -hmm. my own material, a bit of the Eagles, a bit of Dire Straits, all of the usual sort of things, Irish music and all sorts of everything. And um, and then he gave me this Johnny Cash and he said, look, you sound more like Johnny Cash than Johnny Cash does. And I think that these songs would really, really suit you. Mm -hmm. And I listened through to a load of this, uh, these songs and I just loved it. And I thought that it suited me. So that began my love for it more because I was doing, I was already doing like The Ring of Fire and uh, Walk the Line. So I learned more songs, and then the movie came out in 2005, which was called uh, Walk, uh, Walk, uh, Walk the Line. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah. amazing movie. I've seen it about five times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whacking. I think, was, wasn't it? I think Johnny Cash was played by Joe Quinn, wasn't he? Uh, whacking Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Joe Quinn. Yeah, yeah. Joe, yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, sorry, Joe Quinn, but. Uh, uh, Joaquin is. is, it, is, it, is, it, is it? Sorry, I, I always thought it was Joe Quinn. Joe Quinn. Oh, uh, uh, that's how you spell it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Say it like uh, Joaquin. Yeah. Joaquin. J is like a Y. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So everybody bought me the DVD of that film, and I've got about seventeen DVDs of it. <laughs> have <to> really? <laughs> yeah. So you them out to all your friends. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I have. So I love the film. And then I thought it'd be great if I do a night of John, Johnny Cash songs. Mm -hmm. And I got a bass player and a drummer and a band. So I did. And I did a night at a place in, in Worcester, like a live music venue called uh, the Mars Bar. And, um, and, and it just went down really well. And I knew that I was onto something more exciting because... What you do when you focus on something, there's more demand for it. If you just become a musician that plays a little bit of everything, then you just become like a pub band. You know what I mean? Whereas if you yeah, just focus, yeah. if you just focus on one thing, then there's more demand for it. You know, so so that's what I did, and I really enjoy his uh, material anyway. But with developing the show, I've been through a million nightmares like you do whenever there's any money to be made out of doing anything you always people can see that and they and, and it always brings on on board issues you know and there's problems I, like i had to fight off a manager once who's just oh, just a, a nightmare so had to get uh, rid of him and that was a nightmare but luckily i've been on on my own now and looking after myself for about about 10 years and I, that's a long time Clive. so you haven't got a manager now you literally manage yourself without a manager i don't want any any managers no. Because, no. because they just like to control you you know so, so today how long has the show been going clive uh since 2005 so yeah 2005 so 16 so, years this yeah year, it? it's a long minus, time uh, minus uh the lockdown yeah yeah yeah. So you, you are amazing. I mean, we've seen a couple oh, of your shows. I know Tony's seen more of your shows and, and yeah. I'm a singer songwriter myself. And you you oh, are yeah. phenomenal. Oh. Yes, I, I'm actually signed to a record label and I've been busy writing songs and, you know, launching them into the charts with the record label as well. Um, oh, so, but I also write lots of conscious music type songs all about healing the world and how we can make the world a better place and, and waking humanity up consciously as well. Yeah. So it's always like important messages in my songs, which, mm -hmm. which is really good. But I've sung since the age of three myself. So I understand when you're talking about singing and it is a passion, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's something that's within you. And when you write a song, you are telling a story as well. So it's wonderful during COVID lockdown that you've been very proactive yeah. and writing some of your own stuff as well. Yeah. And now you're going to be doing an actual show and yeah. sing all of those wonderful songs that you've actually written. Yeah, I mean, uh, we always do one of uh, my own songs uh, within the show. The one that we've been doing for years is uh, September. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, that's the song. I think you played that last time we saw you. Yeah. Because in the show then. it's a Johnny Cash theme song. It's got like a, a train uh, rhythm to it. Yeah. And 
it talks about prisons and shooting people and alcohol and all of the, all of the things that Johnny Cash was uh, famous for, you know. So, so that's why we we choose that song. But uh, I mean, I haven't got any other uh, uh, platform to promote myself and my songs because I'm useless when it comes to manipulating social media. And like a lot of artists can do this because they know what they're up to with social media and how to market they do better i think you you're more successful if you know how to market yourself whereas i'm i'm absolutely useless i'm i'm very very old-fashioned i i managed to get my songs available to download uh, eventually yeah. but it took me ages to learn the way uh, to do that and i just did it once and now if i had to do it again i'm not sure that i would uh, remember <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? You, you're already branded anyway, aren't you, as a show? Now, how often do you um, tweak the show each year? How often do you do that? Do you do it every year or every couple of years? Well, you have got a, a Twitter account and an Instagram account. But no, I tweak it. it. Tweak the show, I mean. Oh, tweak it. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a very organic thing. I just do it uh, when we're on the road. You know, right. so so if a song's not working or the audience repeatedly don't respond to a certain song, then I'll then I'll uh, drop that song and put something else in. Or if we just get bored with playing the same songs, then I'll alter it. I mean, ob ob obviously, we always have to do the hits, you know, but yeah. a lot of the others I'll alter it. Like during the show, we probably play about 30 between 34 and 38 songs every, every night so so that's really? a lot yeah yeah it's it's a, lot a lot of songs, songs in a show yeah well it's, it's a fast a lot of songs. it is but it's a fast moving song and a lot of those songs particularly the ones from the 50s and 60s they're very short you know they're literally about uh uh two minutes each you know yeah so uh, a lot of the songs back then days were were they two and a half minutes maximum well, if it, was more than three minutes, if it was more than three minutes, then they wouldn't be able to uh, uh, to get the airplay. No, I mean, it's changed now, isn't it? I mean, I, I launched a charity single called Homeless at Christmas, and that was literally, I think it was five minutes, four seconds. And initially I thought, gosh, are the record label going to be able to actually launch the song? But they did. And obviously right. Bohemian Rhapsody, that was a really long song, wasn't it? And that was launched into the charts as well. So I think things are sort of changing now. But you've obviously got a really good memory, um, the, the fact to remember all those 35 songs. I mean, the most I've had to learn is like 55 songs when I did musical theatre West End Nights. And I remember going to bed and those songs going round and round in my head. So do you find the same thing, Clive, that these songs tend to go round and round in your head when you've been on stage? Yeah, but it, I, like, I'll find myself listening to the rest of uh, the band be yes. because I know those songs inside out and back to front. Mm -hmm. I could do them if I'm tired or or drunk you know what i mean i can't yeah. I, like, <laughs> which is good <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so, i know the songs but i end up listening to the rest of the band so if uh, the harmony vocals are a little bit out because i'm 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 really into the backing of uh, uh, vocals and i try to make sure that uh, the harmony vocals are uh they're on uh they're on form and if there's anybody singing a bit flat or a little bit sharp then it uh drives me mental you know mm. but uh, yes but uh the band that i've got they're really really good that they're, they're really really good so generally they're ace you know so your, your lead guitarist has been with you for a while now isn't he uh nick's no 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 on, on, the, on your left he, he's on when, when he, he's, he's on your left of you isn't he when he did this show yes he's to the left of you uh, yeah yes uh he's uh no longer uh, uh with us no i've got a new guitarist who's from okay uh belfast and he's extremely good he, he's a a singer songwriter also you know so so uh he's really good um i've got martin the bass player uh the double bass player yeah he's from the, the previous band and and he's with me now also i've got the same uh drummer and i've got uh, two uh brass players also and they're still with me 
my June Carter, my last June Carter, she got pregnant at the beginning of lockdown. Remember you saying that before, yeah. yeah. And the other one before that, I remember when we actually came to see you perform live at the Pavilion, and then she came to the Tivoli. That was her last show. Um, and she wasn't very well, was she? She was a lovely lady, and she left in 2018. There was another lady who took her oh, place. Right. So was that the lady then who fell pregnant that replaced her? I can't remember her name. Can you remember her I name? I can't remember her name. The lady, the lady that you saw was Amanda. Amanda, that's it. Uh, Amanda Stone. Um, um, yeah, she she was a great singer, amazing, amazing singer. But they were so lovely. Yeah, she was a lovely lady, but. Uh, um, I've got to be careful what I say, you know what I mean? She, for personal reasons among the band, she had to leave. So, so, so yes. she's no longer with us. And um, I, then Emily joined us and she was awesome. She was really, really good, full of energy, very young. She was only 30. Um, I wasn't sure whether it worked actually, because I'm like, 14 years older than her so i'm not sure if i looked more like a big brother or a father rather than uh, yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so, i get the same thing clive yeah <laughs> i get the same thing in fact i just say we're just brother and sister you know <laughs> yeah, exactly but it was what it was and anyway she got pregnant to her husband because they got uh, married and they've got a lovely baby but you can't have a baby and be on the road really it just no. doesn't uh, uh work um so so she's left but she'll come back and do the occasional show if i need her you know but so but i've That's got good. another june carter uh and her name's megan and she's just joined and she's awesome so i'm Aww. looking forward to that and hopefully she'll last longer than a year the other ones yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, so is she actually coming down when you come down to the Tivoli Theatre in Wimborne on the 11th of September? Yeah. With you. Yeah. So she's going to be performing there, which would be good. So we'll actually get to meet her. Yeah, she's going to be with me for every show from uh, now on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So what do your family think about, you know, you doing Johnny Cash? I must be so proud of you and the amazing work that you've done over the years as well. Well, they are. Um... um I mean, I personally feel that, well, so far as my wife's concerned, Sarah, she, she's, she's just very proud of, of me, obviously, because what I do, I manage to provide for the family. And it's not just that. I do it with passion and, and everything else, you know, and I make sure that I'm around as much as I can be uh, when we're uh, busy and uh, we're on the road. Um, you know, uh, my eldest boy is taken after me. He's very uh, musical. So when I'm too old, maybe I can, may maybe he can fill fill uh, my shoes. You know, maybe I don't know. No, that'd be fantastic if he did. I mean, maybe he got on well, stage with you and perform in the future. Well, he doesn't sing. Exactly. He just plays. Mm -hmm. So you can't really do Johnny Cash not unless you can sing. You know. No, <laughs> but he could play the guitar and standing next to you while you're singing. <laughs> Isn't that'd be really nice <laughs> maybe yeah uh and my little girl she she loves it she absolutely loves it but but she's only six so so does that's she sing? oh yeah she sings and does cartwheels yeah yeah oh bless her what literally <laughs> yeah. singing while she's doing the cartwheels <laughs> yeah she, she she prefers uh my own material though she always Does she? tells me off. She says, Daddy, why don't you do your own songs more? Oh, bless her. So do you ever sing with your daughter then? I do. Does she sing alongside? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do Facebook lives, live screens once every five or six weeks. And Aww. I do it before she goes, before she goes uh, to bed. I do it at seven o'clock every sort of five or six weeks on a on a friday and she joins me for the last song or two so she just oh, so uh, lovely yeah yeah and everybody likes uh, likes that um but yeah i mean i feel a bit sort of i sometimes feel like i've sold my soul to the devil really because i've just gone for a thing because it's so hard to make a, a living out of doing your own material that you have to do whatever you can within your skill set you know and yes 
and so in with me because i'm not a flamboyant performer that's what it wouldn't ever suit me to do elvis or freddie mercury or somebody like that i'm just not that kind of person that's why johnny cash suits me because he didn't uh, uh jump around a lot you know so yeah so uh but it's that's why i went down that route because it it was the thing that i found that there was enough popularity for it to make a living out of you know because you you have to be very lucky to make a living out of doing your own thing you know most definitely so when did your first love with johnny cash sort of start was it when you met Chris or sort of like going as a child? Because you said you used to ying, sing a couple of his songs anyway, didn't you? Um, did your parents used to sort of like listen to Johnny Cash on the radio, for instance? Yeah, I mean, my mum's Irish, as, as as I said, and I was always brought up with listening to country music and country Irish music like Foster and Allen and all of that thing and Brendan Shine and all of the older, more Irish sort of um singers uh probably wouldn't have heard of them as much over in england but um but john uh johnny cash was was amongst all of them and i and i, and I remember liking the johnny cash songs uh, more than uh, the other songs yeah so i suppose subconsciously it sunk in when i was only five or six years old yeah so it's very early. And is there a particular Johnny Cash song that you love? And if, if there is, why do you love that particular song? Please? Oh, God. I always yeah, get out. No, sorry. I always get out. I'm, I'm honestly, sorry. No, no, that's all. them out every now and again. Sorry, Clive. Uh, no. My God, no. Please. Um, I like so many of his songs. I do. I, I like the ones that suit my, my voice, obviously. I like A Thing Called Love, uh, you know? Yeah. You know that one? Yes. Uh, that's a song written by uh, Jerry Reed, who was a fantastic singer-songwriter, uh, guitar player. He was uh, he was in some films also. He was a fairly 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 well-known actor, uh, but he was a great guitar player, and he wrote that song. And Johnny Cash did that song, uh, a thing called Love. So a thing called Love, uh, one piece at a time. I love that that one because it's funny. Um, mm -hmm uh sunday morning coming down once again that's chris christopherson song uh uh the highway man i love love that song yeah do you talk about that clive um so during my show sometimes i i play some of the highway men songs and that and the other band traveling wilburys but chris christopherson wayne and wayne and jennings and all those have you ever thought about taking johnny cash on the road as a highwayman at all a sideline show i could but there's already i think there's already a tribute to the highwayman highwayman out there but you know what i mean um i think the highwaymen are not i don't think they're a well enough known show to to warrant doing a dedicated show to them Okay. I'd, I'd rather do my own material, really. I mean, it's 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 difficult enough to sell tickets for 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 the road show, uh, the Johnny Cash road show, without without taking on anything else. I I do own another show uh, uh, called the Honky Tonk Angels. I did notice that actually on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Tell and us a little bit about the Honky Tonk Angels. It's a show that I created as a sideline. Um, um, uh, Oops, unfortunately we've lost connection. Yeah, we've it's... lost him, have we? Sorry, Clive, I think we've um, lost Have connection. you lost me? There you are. I can see you again now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, have you okay, lost we're me? back Thank again. You. You're back again. And he's back in the room. Hello? Hello. Oh, Thank yeah. you. We can hear you now. Sorry. Are you there? Yes, yeah. we're, we're here now. Sorry. Hold on a minute. We must have lost our connection. He's... he's um, I can't hear you. you. You can't hear us. Oh dear. Um, you've, uh, you've gone. Okay, I think. Maybe turn the sound up. Maybe. Yeah, we're 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 still hooked up. Okay, yeah.
Oh dear, unfortunately we've lost them um, connection, so hopefully Clive will join us very shortly um, so we continue with the interview and asking him a little bit more about the Honky Tonk Angels as well. I think we'll, we'll play one or two clips while we're waiting for John uh, Clive to come back and we'll just play a clip here if we can. This is one of his most famous yes. ones, I think. That's fantastic. Hey, Clive. <laughs> yes. We're just playing one of your clips, Clive, of um, okay. Ring of Fire. Yeah, yeah, that's the... We thought we'd just take the opportunity whilst we were getting you back to play your clip, and that's why it was there. Oh, bless you. Thank you. No, that, that's uh, that's always our last, our, our last song. Yeah, yeah. A fantastic song as well. So, so please tell us, Clive, like we were saying just before you lost connection, about the Honky Tonk Angels and what was your inspiration, that be, you know, behind actually starting that particular show, please? Okay. The reason why I went was because my son phoned me because I usually uh, oh. uh, pick him up from school. And Oh, bless you. And You're okay for time? Yes. I thought that the interview was only going to be about five, five minutes. So I was oh, so that. sorry. Oh, sorry, Clive. No, no, no. Say, um, no, uh, Tony was uh, in contact with yeah. you. I, th I think whenever you're, if you feel, start to feel uncomfortable and you feel that time is no, up, no. then just let us know. I'm absolutely fine, Tony. Right, uh, 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 the Hong Kong Angels. Yes, it's another show that I created and it's only going to be uh, the one, the one other show because I don't think that you can, I already think that I'm split because I think the Johnny Cash Road Show was was successful and hopefully will be successful again when the restrictions are lifted. But it's it's been successful to this point because I've given it my everything. I I I haven't um, like done this and done that and everything else. I put all of my love and energy and enthusiasm all into that one show, and I think that it's paid off because of that. It certainly has. You can see, you know, when it you're on stage and, and shows, performing, yeah. you actually you shows. your heart and soul, you know, into yes. every song that you yeah. do actually perform. Yeah. So to the point where I sacrificed myself as uh, Clive John, the singer songwriter, you know, I, I've let that go uh, because of it. But now I'm at the age where I want to try and not bring back my song, my songwriting, but I want, uh, yeah, my songwriting. I want to try and bring that back a, a little bit, so I can show the world that I'm that I'm doing my own thing. Also, that's why we're doing my own show of my own material next mm -hmm. next year. Anyway, sorry, I always uh, do this. I, I, talk I was going to say the honky tonk angels. Yes. So, was that the inspiration behind it then? So you can do your own material through the honky tonk angels. It was just sorry. another show that I wanted to do also everything that i do is always going to be within the loosely within the country genre not the country and western genre mm -hmm. uh because it, i i think the british country and western scene is really yeehaw and it's really really uh cheesy so i i, I want i want to do country music in, in a high quality fashion the way the way that it should be done you know what i mean yes. so i mean i mean I, I do a country show myself, as I say, but that's more modern country, not traditional country, as you call country and western. That's that's traditional yes. country, yes. And, and that's the kind of the era that Johnny Cash comes from. But the country I I know now is the modern day country, uh, with Dirks Bentley, Tim McGraw, that kind of thing. Well, that's modern country, but I mean proper roots country, like like. I wouldn't say that Johnny Cash is a uh, country. I think he's just Johnny Cash. You can't uh, pigeonhole him, I don't think. Yes, he does lend towards, he does lean towards uh, uh, country. It's, country is probably the nearest genre, but I just think that he's Johnny Cash. There isn't anybody else that sounds uh, like him. But uh, uh, the Honky Tonk Angels, I wanted to create a country variety show and do a lot of the well-loved songs like S S um, Stand By Your Man and Tammy Wynette and uh, the Patsy uh, Klein songs too, like Crazy and all of that. And uh, Dolly Parton, obviously. So I've yeah. got three three ladies that, that do the songs of 
Dolly Parton, Tammy Lynette and Patsy Cline. And I've got a band, a five piece band, which play the pedal steel, double bass, all the instruments that should be used for those songs. And it, and they sound awesome. But um, um, I'm trying to get them on the road as soon as possible. They were supposed to be on the road. We had about eight or nine shows booked in for 2020. But of course, uh, the COVID thing uh, put an end to that. So hopefully those shows are going to be rescheduled and they'll be do doing them again uh, next year. Which would be fantastic. I'd love to actually see one of those shows as well. You know, I can imagine yeah. they are amazing. So getting back to your shows and obviously getting prepared to get back on the road again, how many shows are you looking at to hopefully do this year? I mean, obviously now we're in July and before yeah, you know it'll be August well. as well. And obviously restrictions are going to be easing on the 19th of actual July. Um, so how many shows have you sort of like planned between now and Christmas, for instance? Well, I'm trying to get back on the road for September. So, so we begin in September. I've got my calendar here. Shall I read it out or not? Yes, please, because I know you're in Wimborne on the 11th. <laughs> <laughs> then our viewers can have an idea when yes, to can, expect you. Yeah, we can yeah. actually purchase the tickets from the Tivoli Theatre. Yeah. For all of us viewers that live in Dorset, uh, if you'd like to go see Clive at the Tivoli Theatre and Johnny Cash Roadshow, you can actually purchase the tickets on their website, which is www.tivolitheatre.com. So that's www.tivolitheatre.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's the, uh, the Tivoli. We've been there lots of times before. I, kn I know the venue manager, uh, Charlie. Uh, he's it's a lovely man. there, isn't it? Because it's a really old yeah. theatre, isn't it? It's like going back in a time warp. I used to speak to a guy called up. Tim there. Tim was uh, the manager when I last spoke to him at the Tier Theatre. Tim. Yeah. yeah, lovely guy. It's kind of like a cross between a nice village hall and a theatre, isn't it? Isn't it? You know what it I mean? is, yeah, that's it right. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you've been there many, many years. It's very yeah. Victorian. It's a Victorian theatre, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I've been formed on the stage there as myself uh, oh, you yeah, know, a few times singing. And it, so it's just a, a lovely, quaint theatre, like isn't it? Like you say. See you. One, one oh, of these bless days. you. I have to send you some of my songs. If you accept my friend request, then you can um, hear some of my songs. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, Thank you. the. the the first one is the King's Hall down in in uh, Hearn uh, Bay on September the 4th. I've never been there before, but that's our first one. And Hearn Bay is right down south. It's right down that's south. That's not far from us, is it? Hearn it's Bay. Isn't that in Canterbury, Somerset? Sort of. Yeah, Somerset Way, I Somerset think. Somerset yeah. Way, I no, think. Yeah. Bay. No, it's further. It's, oh, is, it's, it's, is it Devon? Down that way, would you say Devon? Right I've down. I've heard of it. It's Ilford King, down that way. No, it's like near uh, Folkestone, Canterbury. Oh, that, it's completely the opposite way. Oh, it's no, now in the East Country. Oh, it's, oh right. It's, it's down yeah. Kent. Yeah. Kent. Yeah. 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 yeah, East right. Country. Yeah. So that's uh, Hearn Bay on the 4th September. And then we're going to Low Stoff at the Marina Theatre on the 9th of September. And then the Brook, which is a, a, a music venue in southampton on uh the 10th of september you're getting closer yes and then <laughs> and then with you at uh wimborne um hey yeah wimborne, wimborne. Hey, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's the one yeah and then basingstoke at the Haymarket on uh, uh the night after you that's my old town yeah. and then we've got a big one on monday the 13th at uh, liverpool empire which is a huge venue, and that's one of our largest venues uh, that we do. That's on Monday the thirteenth, so that's five gigs back to back all over all over the country. What do you do when you're doing these gigs? Are you touring? Do you stay in hotels, or do you have a campers or whatever? I used to have a business account with uh, Premier Inns. Okay, Premier Inns. So I just book Premier Inns. Um, uh, my wife. Uh, uh, books them for us and they're we, really uh, good premier inns as well and the beds are nice and comfortable aren't they yeah yeah they serve a purpose you know the, as you say the beds are uh comfortable but they're usually next to uh brewer's fair which which yes, is brewer's fair's good uh, yeah uh the breakfasts are terrible they're horrible <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with premier isn't it you have yeah. to go to a, a, a separate 
company almost just to get a breakfast or a dinner rather yeah, than the, the yeah the venue band. doing it themselves yeah the band always goes to mac they always go to mcdonald's <laughs> Oh, yeah. do they? I must McDonald's is very cheap, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. go for the drive through as I well. can imagine the Happy Meals all round, Clive. <laughs> it's just cheap, you know. That's the reason yes. why the it rest is. of the band go, you know. So, uh, 16th at Grimsby Auditorium and then uh, Buxton Opera House on the 17th of September, which is a great venue, re really old, big uh, Victorian venue. And then the Octagon in Yeovil on the 24th. September. That's where my daughter lives in Yeovil. Yeah. Sam always backwards and forwards down that way. Yeah. So you've got lots of shows planned. Yeah, and then and then Scarborough at the end of the month, and then uh, the Victoria Theatre in Halifax at the end of the month, and then we're off to, in theory, we're off to Belgium and Holland for about six or seven dates at the beginning of October. But oh, this yeah. is exciting! This all so can... uh, uh, depends on. Uh, the restrictions, you know, doesn't yes. it? Yes. So mm. you're going to be on the road then, really, I suppose, Clive, for maybe three or four weeks away from your family in total. Well, that's just what I've what I've said. But we get back from Holland on uh, the 14th of October and then we've got two. We're at the Grove in Dunstable the day after we get back and then mm -hmm. uh, the Pavilion Theatre in uh, Cromer the night after that. And then we've got one night off, and then we've got uh, Brighton, then we've got West Kensington in London, then we've got Chatham, then we've got uh, uh, the Discorn the, the uh, uh, Hall, and then the Princes in Clacton, and then the Princess Theatre in Torquay. Can I just say something, Clive, while, while you're reading these out? And it absolutely thrills me that you've got these bookings to go to, mate. Absolutely brilliant. Well, you've I got all this yet. much lined up. I'm actually thrilled for you that well, you're going to be back on the road again and, and start doing what you do best. It's exciting. It, will, it is exciting, but only if they sell tickets because I, yes. I, I, I pay the sound them. crew and I pay the band a fixed fee. So if I don't sell enough tickets, then I could lose, literally lose uh, my uh, my house over it. So to me, it's great to have all of the dates, but also it's the people. Long, you sell a, the tickets. a long list of uh, risks, you know. That's yes, what it, it is. is. Well, that's what can it can is. Can I just re reiterate something, Clive? You, you're saying that and how much you depend on it. That let's let our viewers know that the fact that Clive isn't on a salary the theatre doesn't play Clive. It's the amount of people that goes and sees Clive's yeah. show that yeah. he relies on. So please go and see the show and support Clive because it's you getting through that door is, is whether he has his next meal or not because we depend on <laughs> his, his viewers and our, our listeners to go and see you. Yeah. Also, yeah, well, Clive, do you have a particular website where people can actually purchase tickets for all of these different locations that it, it, before you actually go there? So they can sort of plan it because quite often people will plan events, you know, ahead throughout the year of, you know, particular bands they want to go and see or shows. Have you actually got a direct website where they can go and then click on there and think, right, I'm going to get my ticket now ready for yeah. when you come to this particular location, please? Yeah, yeah. They just go onto my website, uh, uh, the show uh, website and a list of all the dates. Oh, in, in fact, uh, the website has just been revamped completely revamped and my new albums available on there there's a shop page with all of the albums and the merchandise mm -hmm. so you can order a, a cap and a beanie and a baseball um uh, the hoodies and the t-shirts and all of my albums all all of the roadshow albums and also my own albums as a songwriter and and all of the show dates also so that's on um www uh, johnny cash roadshow that's all one word j-o-h-n-n-y johnny cash roadshow uh, dot com and uh, and everything's on there fantastic so again for all of you viewers that are watching today and love to go and see clive who's amazing on stage in order to purchase the tickets and see if he's coming to your town it's www 
johnnycashroadshow.com. And on there, you can actually book your tickets for yourself, for your families, for your friends, and plan ahead before he actually visits a theatre yeah. near you. And you won't be disappointed to say oh, Clive is amazing, phenomenal on the stage. Aren't that's you, Clive? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I, I think you sure. are. Uh, we do. We all think you are. Myself, yeah. I think yeah. you are phenomenal on that stage. Yeah. Oh. You know. I don't know. I don't know. I, ju I just, I don't think about it. I don't think I'm good, bad or indifferent. I just do what I do. I haven't ever thought yes. about am I good or am I not good? You know what I mean? I you, think... You're very humble like me, Clive, but mm. you, you love what you do and you do what you love. And at the end of the day, it shines through when you are on that stage and you captivate the audience and they all love you. So we love you, don't we? But all, every, you're amazing. Yeah. The, the whole movie. team here in the hot seat absolutely love you and adore you for well, what you do. do. And we're really proud of you as well, Clive. You yeah. know, and everything that you have achieved as well. And keep shining bright, doing what you love. I do. I've, I mean, since uh, the lockdown, I've written a whole like load of songs. And I think my new songwriting is. It's actually more uplifting. I've I've written in the past. I used to be a typical songwriter, like sitting on the end of the bed and where is me and all misery songs. Mm. And then as I've aged, I've actually got more sort of more sort of optimistic. You know what I mean? And yes. and and a lot of my songs are more sort of upbeat or a little bit mm. feel good. You know. So I'm looking forward to that. I mean, obviously there are the ballads and all of that, but. Um, generally i think my songwriting is getting more feel feel good so um i'm looking forward to to recording it but i can't at the moment i can't afford to lay the money aside to record a new album of my own material like my last album i had the spare money and uh, my last album a brand new uh beginning of just my own material yeah. i had a, a string quartet on it yeah, i had yeah, violins yeah. and cellos and and all of that so i can't lay that money aside for a new album at, at the moment i need to put money into the marketing like all our posters yeah. and flyers for, for september alone were like 1700 really yeah. it was just say clive that um we've made a lot of progress here this afternoon and as we've got a couple of minutes left and I want to say, on behalf of myself, thank you for talking to us today. And I'm going to leave the last couple of minutes to Deborah. I know she's got a couple of last minute questions she likes to ask. <laughs> okay, nice to see you, but, by the way. Yeah, I'm staying here. Oh, but and I'm going to leave. Clive, as I say, because I haven't seen you since 2018. So I feel really humbled, you know, to interview yeah. you today or, or on the show. And I say, I'm just really excited for you nice to, to be able to get back on the road and things yeah. to get back to normal yeah. as well. So where would you like to see the sort of like show going within the next year? I mean, obviously you've got plans with the two shows and also with your album as well. I mean, have you ever thought about sort of maybe doing a show where you're collaborating all of them together um, and doing maybe, for instance, I know your show's only going for a couple of hours, but if you maybe sort of done like Johnny Cash and then Honky Tonk Angels and then some of your own songs, and it's like maybe an evening with Clive John Ooh, and then good. incorporating Johnny Cash, the Honky Tonk Angels, and your original music. I mean, something maybe you could even think about yourself where I you do maybe a one-off show. What do you reckon? I think that's a really really good idea i mean as, as i say i am doing one show i've got one venue called uh, the chroma uh, pavilion theater and they're allowing me to go and do one night of my own material next uh, may so they're booking me as uh, myself um uh, but yeah i think that doing a, a night of the honk tonk angels and i, I mean I obviously couldn't use the band from that show because it's a nightmare when you when when you have yes, to set up, set up different musicians with all their different settings and all the rest of it. So I'd probably uh, get one of the lady singers from that show and get my band to learn a few of those songs so that they could back uh, back them, and then I could have like a few of the songs from Patsy Cline and Tammy Wynette, for example, and then do my own material also maybe something like that yeah yeah that's a good idea i think that'd be really good for the future it could be like a variety show then and you you can 
put that show together yourself and call it an evening with Clive John and then add everything else that you do because you're multi-talented and you're very diverse in what you do as well. So it'd be wonderful in the future, maybe see a show where you're covering everything that you do so people can see all sides of the amazing work that you do. Does that make sense? Yeah, that is a wonderful idea. I'll give it a, I'll uh, give it some thought. I mean, obviously if I do something like that, it wouldn't happen until 2000 and probably well, maybe late 2022, but probably not yes. 20, uh, until 2023 because all of the shows for next year are like... Already booked. Uh, they're all the reschedules. So so yes. all of the shows that should have happened during 20, uh, uh, 2020, they've all been rescheduled. So there's like, I think in theatres for... Uh, next next year you're going to have night after night of of shows you know that's that's mm -hmm. the other thing so i think it'll take another year before everything settles back to the way that it uh, was yes you know? and it'd be wonderful you know to have all of the theaters opening up i mean i know the nightclubs are still closed at the moment and the youngsters will look forward to the nightclubs open up but it's just nice that we're getting back to some sort of normality mm. where i don't think yeah. things will ever be normal again because the way we're doing things is changing because the world's just changing you know in itself anyway and people are constantly sort of changing themselves aren't they um as well but i do think there's hope for the future i think there's lots of good things for us all to look forward to lots of I positive things as well I think, I think that people i mean for me for all theater all theater shows i don't think that we're going to start selling tickets and people and until the masks are gone because i think the yes. masks in my opinion i know that i know that there's other people that want to keep on uh, uh wearing the masks but in in my a little opinion i think that i think that it's a great thing that it's not going to be the law for people uh, to wear them because when you see people wearing it, it it sends out a subconscious message that there's something the wrong you know what i mean yeah. so yes so when there's no more masks i think subconsciously i think people will begin to relax a little bit more and yeah. i think also like you say you know fear as well because a lot of people have been very fearful since the pandemic and, you know, as that fear is dissipating now, you know, people are no longer being afraid to step out into the world and to breathe in the fresh air and also realising that the world is a safe place at the end of the day, is. not to be afraid to step out of your homes. The world is a safe place um, at the end of the day, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's something, obviously, that, that it's going to be something that we need to live with. It's just like we live yes. with uh the flu or whatever it is you i think that's already been said in parliament anyway hasn't it it's already it's been all said precautionary measures at the yeah. end of the day isn't it it's just staying safe yeah. precautionary measures washing your hands hand sanitizing yeah. like you say those that want to wear the mask and they can uh and yeah. you know those that don't want to wear the mask then that's entirely up to them yeah. as well isn't it at the end of the day i think that's hand sanitizing is it doesn't it's it's not an invasive thing is something that no, you can quickly do and i think that it protects you a lot more than a, a mask does yes because, i think so yeah so i think that if if I, there's anything that i will carry on doing i personally will carry on sanitizing before and after you go into a supermarket for example you know yes. so i think that that's important but it's something that doesn't uh, bother people it's something that doesn't look like there's something uh wrong you know so i think that that's the way that that's the no, way most way. definitely and yeah. you know like you say taking the precautionary measures and stay safe and use hand sanitizer a lot of people yeah. carry it around in their handbags anyway well yeah. thank you so much clive for talking to us today we can't yes. wait for you you know to come down to september. dorset come on, on september. september the 11th yeah. to see you live yeah. performing yeah. on stage yeah. 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 your new june cash as well and good luck with everything you're doing I say you're going to have a busy period and enjoy the special time with your family before yeah. you go on the road as well, because I'm sure that they will miss you and you'll miss your family too. Yeah, of course. And I look forward very much to seeing you on September the 11th in Wimbledon. Oh, thank you so Give much. Give our love to Sarah, by the way, and the children. And to the I, children as I well. I definitely will, Tony. And oh, Deborah, thank you. all the best. Oh, take care. God bless you. Goodbye. Take care. Stay in touch. Thank you, Clive. Thank you. All the best. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 
And once again, for those of you that have been watching the show, if you'd like to purchase tickets to see Clive John perform live on stage with the Johnny Cash Tribute Act, you can go directly onto his website, pre-book your tickets for your family and your friends on www.johnnycashroadshow.com. So that's www.johnnycashroadshow.com. Dot com. It's always a pleasure to speak to Clive, isn't it? He's it's a certain, lovely, yeah, lovely guy. It certainly is. And when you meet him in person as well, if you get a chance to go and see a show and you, you go backstage and you get to talk to Clive, you will see he is a totally down-to-earth, lovable guy and he just wants to do the best for himself and his family, which we can't, can't blame him for that, really. Most definitely. And he's an yeah. amazing singer and performer, so you won't be disappointed and you want a fantastic night out, book your tickets now. So that's the end of the show today. So thank you so much for um, all of your love and all your support and also to our wonderful show producers, Moino and Salima, and also Tom that's hiding behind the camera as well. Indeed, yes. And we will be back in a few weeks once again on In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella and... Charlie go. Until then, bye. Bye for now, wherever you are in the world, and stay safe.